Hello and welcome to the best of Coach Rick's winners. I am Coach Rick's respect, integrity, and excellence. And we are focusing on the ABCs of sports. The A's, let's kind of talk about a few of those. Uh, academics, association, athletics, and anchors. Yes, those mentors. And then we talk about your plan B. And plan C is career transition. But we're going to talk about plan B today. And our guest is none other than young men's basketball coach, Kenneth Wayne Kimball, Jr. Thank you, Coach, for being on the show today. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Right. Really appreciate it. Right. You know, it's been great to develop a relationship with you and get to know you. I met you uh, as a coach during the summer working with some young people. So thank you for investing in our most valuable asset, our young people. Thank you, sir. And uh, I don't want to drag it on, so let's just kind of get right to it and <laughs> find out a little bit about you. Okay. Uh, tell me about what role you're playing right now in the world of athletics. Uh, right now, um, I do a summer program with with uh, with Ed Rich Youth. Ed Rich Youth. Um, I kind of uh, try to get them develop develop teach them the fundamentals of the uh, game of basketball. Um, it's something that's lost in today's um, in today's teaching. You sure. know the, the fundamentals. <laughs> um, and I also I'm an assistant head coach at Fairly High this year. Awesome. Uh, I'm there. We're trying to turn the program around. Um, they've been in the in the in the cellar yeah. for a little while, so we're we're trying to turn things around. So. Well, according to what I read not very long ago, sounds like you guys are doing a pretty good job, and thank you for that lead-in because it just shows the breadth of the young people that you're working with. I know yeah. that you work with uh, preteens and teens, so that's really good. But let's find out a little bit more about you. Okay. So. Tell us about Coach Kenneth Kimball, um, just about you as a person. Tell me about where you're from and all that. Uh, I'm from Tennessee. Um, I spent uh, four or five years of my childhood in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, my mother moved there. Um, and I graduated from Melrose High School um, here, here in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, um, I went, I left, went to college, I graduated high school, went to college at Philander Smith College. It's a historically black school in Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, I studied there for two years and I finished uh, my college career at Lemoyne Owen College. The Lemoyne Owen the College. The Lemoyne Owen College. All right. Yes, That's sir. great. That's awesome. I didn't yes, realize that. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we've actually had Coach Anderson on the show some time ago. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, he sir. and Coach Turner. So That's great. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, good to hear. I didn't realize that. So tell me. Everybody has a favorite, or everybody has somebody that they looked up to. Who would that basketball player be? Uh, I was a big Scottie Pippen fan. Scottie Pippen. Yes, sir. Yeah. Everybody loved Michael Jordan, but Scottie Pippen, he appealed to me because he did everything on the court. He defended, he scored, he guarded the best player on the other team, and he's, he also handled the ball, so he pretty much was a universal player wow. and uh, that's kind of how I patterned my game after so he was he inspired me a lot okay that's pretty good yes, and you know it's it tells me too that you're a trailblazer because everybody loves the big names and everybody likes mm -hmm. to go with that same name that everybody's calling so I really applaud you for that uh, yes, uh, as a matter of fact my dad was telling me some time ago that uh, Scotty Pippen's dog of choice was a Rottweiler and he says he flew him someplace and of course he had to take his Rottweiler my dad wasn't too fond of that but <laughs> nevertheless so that's uh, and that tells me something about him too I <laughs> yes, love sir. Rottweiler so uh, that level of tenacity mm -hmm. so you've picked up on that so tell me from that particular person uh, you've got Scotty Pippen that you kind of saw as a, a role model mm -hmm. but there was someone here that you could see from day to day that was probably more of a mentor? Who would that be? Uh, I will, now that I think about it, my first mentor probably was Gabriel Pryor. Mm -hmm. um, he started uh, the AAU program, uh, well, he signed with Team Adidas. Uh -huh. And he pretty much gave me my first opportunity. Um, I had a lot of first. Um, with Coach Pryor, first time on a plane, first time going to uh, 
Virginia. We went, we went to a lot of places. Uh, so I got a lot of experience uh, with Coach Pryor. And from that point on, it kind of kind of uh, drove my hunger to play, play the game. Um, I actually started loving the game yeah. once I started seeing, you know, where it could take me. Because yeah. if I had never played for Coach Pryor, I probably would have never left Memphis. Wow. So hats off to you, Coach Pryor. Yes, sir. Was there anything in particular that you remember about him as a person that really inspired and or encouraged you? Well, Coach Pryor, he was a hard-nosed guy. <laughs> and he didn't let you go half speed on anything. And in the process, he also showed you a lot of love. He, he showed a lot of love off, off the court. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was very important. Um, because I wasn't really close to my father. Uh, he wasn't around as much. So, you know, as, as a young teen, you kind of be looking for that, that, that father figure. Absolutely. You know, kind of lead you in the right, right direction. Wow. So, if you were to share anything with our young people or with a parent or maybe even a coach, mm -hmm. if you were to share something with someone in our viewing, population what would that be because a lot of times people don't realize how much of an influence they are what advice would you share because these young people are watching them oh yes sir it's it's very important um, I had good mentors and I kind of had coaches that um, only use me for my athletic ability um, we play an important role in the community the kids might not tell you uh, all the time, how much of influence you are, but but as coaches, the kids look up to us, uh, not only on the basketball court, but it, in life in general. Because I know my coaches, some of my coaches, I I talk to them about things I couldn't tell my parents because mm. uh, I felt comfortable with them. You know, Good. we built that relationship uh, with them. Wow, I think that says a mouthful. So coaches, parents, um, guardians. Anyone that is working with our young people, we want to first of all thank you and then secondly just understand how valuable they are and how much attention they pay to us. I would like to pause just for a second and just remind everybody that we are here talking with Coach Kenneth Kimball Jr., a basketball coach uh, who has really taken this plan B to the next phase the way that uh, that you should because there's so many skills that are transferable and you've just moved those from actually being a player mm -hmm. to showing young people how to make the most of it. Now I know that you're going to be doing some things a little bit later and if it's okay mm -hmm. I'd like to share with them how they can get in contact with you if that's alright. Okay. So Coach Kimball's contact information is 901-333 9099 and he can be reached on email at Kenny, K-E-N-N-Y, Kimball, 10 at gmail.com. Once again, we are talking about basketball, focusing on plan B, and your tagline, I snagged this off of social media. Social <laughs> media is pretty powerful. I snagged this off of social media, and it is progress through the process. I think that's powerful. I also want to do something that um, I enjoyed doing the last show because we've got some guests that really wanted to uh, come and sit in and really help to uh, support us. So in the audience we've got Mr. Tommy Thompson and Tim Mason with uh, Ricks International, Coach Ricks Winners rather, and we've got uh, Mr. Marvin, Marvin Banks Jr and Marvin Banks III. Marvin Banks III is an aspiring sports agent, so we're pretty excited about that. And uh, we've got none other than Coach Gwen, because if she wasn't <laughs> here, then uh, it'd make it tough for me to continue to move on. Um, going back to the uh, interview here and talking with Coach Kimball, let's talk a little bit more about uh, these young people that you work with. What advice would you give young student athletes? Well, the first piece of information I would give them to always let education be on the forefront um, because if it wasn't for me going to class and getting my work, you know, I probably um, would have fell to the wayside. Yeah. Uh, they kind of saved me. Um, 
And secondly, do not take your do not take your uh, athletic ability for granted. Mm -hmm. um, and I did that a lot coming up. I never um, I never really pictured what I'll be doing five or ten years from now. Um, it was all about today. Uh, you know to set some plans, you know how to set goals for the future. And if you're going to be playing anything, doing anything in life, give it 110%. Wow. And that's one of the things I wish I could go back and do. Um, I pretty much use my God-given talent to get me by. I didn't go the extra mile. Wow. And I was pretty good. And, you know, I, sit, I tell my kids all the time, hey, if I had went the extra mile, there's no telling how far I could have went with wow. this. Um, so do not take advantage of the opportunity you have. Uh, because one day it could be here and the next day it could be gone. Absolutely. Yes, well, you know, it's pretty interesting. We realize that the game of athletics, and I really applaud you for referring to education first because as a part of bringing your A game, academics typically is number one yes, and sir. attitude is usually number two. Yes, you know, sir. it takes the talent to get you there, mm -hmm. but it takes that attitude as we know to really so you mentioned about that talent mm -hmm. and you mentioned about taking care of yourself and it's ironic before yeah. the show coach Wynn was even talking with us mm -hmm. about how to take care of yourself uh -huh. so if you were to just give a broad brush for the young people and even for their parents or their guardians just some things for them to think about and some things for them to do mm -hmm. as young student athletes what would some of those things be uh, one of the big things I see in today's kids, um, they do not, kids today, they, they just go out and play the game. Um, in order to, to maximize your ability, you have to stretch good, you have to eat good, and you have to get plenty of rest. And, and that's something that's lost in, the, um, in today's, with today's kids. It's not stressed enough. Um, I see a lot of injuries. Um, and kids just going out and playing without stretching or, you know, they cramping up, consume enough water and, and they don't sleep enough, you know, and that's very important um, to play your best. You know, it's, it starts before you get on the court and, and a lot of kids don't realize that it starts in your preparation, you know, um, to do your best. Wow. You got to be prepared. Well, that's awesome, and there are a number of things that you just said all in one sentence, and I'll go back to doing your best and giving your best. That is mm -hmm. our corporate company mm -hmm. tagline, is to be your best, okay. and that's why Coach Rick's winners is Coach Rick's winners, because we focus on the young athletes and their family members being their best. Uh, going back once again to Coach <laughs> Gwynn, we were talking about things like, what do you do off the court. You know, Zig Ziglar, um, God rest his soul, just passed away not long ago, but he gives the example of a thoroughbred horse. He asks the question, how many times do you think the night before a race does the horse stay up all night drinking? Chances are they don't. <laughs> you know, and you've talked about stretching and eating and resting. So what other advice would you give to young athletes uh, and even to some of the coaches and maybe to some of the family members as they are working with these young people. What other advice would you give them about off the court and away from the sport? Well, I tell my kids, uh, tell my kids this year uh, all the time that your production on the court that night depends on how you prepare early in the day and the night before. It's a, it's a mental process. Uh, a lot of kids don't realize that basketball is 95% mental and it's only 5% uh, skill and talent. It's all about how you prepare. Uh, you have to get a level f throughout your day. You have to be focused on the task at hand throughout the day, I feel, to get your best performance. Um, so that plays a vital role. You, you can't be hanging with, with guys that, that's not, that doesn't play sports or uh, guys this uh you know shucking and jiving all day yeah. you know um so that's a message i'm trying to get my kids to understand i think they are kind of you know they kind of grasping the idea uh, because the last three games they have tried to get uh, a level of focus right. when they get up in the morning yeah. 
And as a result, we're on a three-game winning streak. And I had one of the kids to come up and say, Coach, you, you're right. You know, if we focus throughout the day, we kind of come in and focus Absolutely. for the game. And um, that's those little things like that. And I, I picked up on these things as I got older. Right. I had no idea about any of this while I was playing. Uh, and it wasn't presented to me. Uh, but that's kind of, you know, I kind of try to, you know, preach the, the the focus, you know, the mental the mental aspect of the game, and that's what's important. Because quite honestly, if you're not mentally and physically prepared, chances are your opponent is. All right. Exactly. And um, the one thing that I noticed about two months ago, I saw a young man that my wife and I we worked with a, a college basketball team, mm -hmm. and this young man now this young man now plays in Europe. Mm -hmm. He's in better condition now while he's having to really manage himself for the most part mm -hmm. than he was when he was in college with all of the coaches and all of the trainers trying to encourage him mm -hmm. and ask him and beg and plead for him to take care of himself. And I said to him, what's the difference? He said, now I understand. Mm -hmm. Now I get it, Coach Ricks. So let's talk about, I want to switch gears just a little bit because when young players come to you, we hope that parents and guardians are really trusting you but sometimes they just don't they don't understand what it takes to get young people mentally tough sometimes mm -hmm. and really get them into the game so they tend to want to coach for you tend to want to tell you what to do tend to not want you to get a little bit emotional and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to mm -hmm. so what advice would you give to parents because I just happen to know you personally mm -hmm. over the past few months. I realize that you love these children. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that most coaches do have a concern and a level of love and caring for these young people. So with the parents that are out there, what advice would you give to them? First and foremost, uh, this comes from uh, experience. You have to get to know your coaches. Uh, sometimes we, uh, sometimes just don't have any knowledge of sports. So they won't come in and, and, and talk with the coaches. Uh, but it's, it's very important for the parents to get to know the coaches. And that way, um, the parents can reiterate what the coaches uh, want the kids, the student athletes to do. Um, because they play a, a vital role. They can either help the student athlete or hurt them. And I've seen both sides of the line. Um, um, just from experience a couple years ago, I had a kid, he played with me the whole summer. And it didn't dawn on me until the end of the summer, I had never met his parents before. And he was one of the kids that was kind of giving me trouble, you know, and um, I never had that parent to, to talk to because the parent wasn't ever available. Uh, so that's very important for the parents to, to get to know the coach and be involved with them. Um, because coaches, like I said, a, a vital role. They can either, you know, they can be using your kid or Absolutely. they can be trying to help your kid. Absolutely. You know, that's just the reality of it. Absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. Well, we want to make sure that we um, change that culture. We want to mm -hmm. make sure that parents know that people like Coach Kimball, uh, Coach Ricks, Coach Ricks winners, and uh, others that are out there are really concerned about our young people. Mm -hmm. uh, I was pretty excited when I heard from the grandfather and then the father of this young man, uh, Marvin Banks, when he said that he really wanted to be a sports agent. Mm -hmm. And to start off early and to really have him to know that the real important piece of that is caring about the person first. Right. So I appreciate you for caring as much as you do and as you have mm -hmm. uh, because you've been my nephew's uh, coach and he yeah, right. loves Coach Kimball. <laughs> now, at some point in time, we all make mistakes, whether they're deliberate or, well, mistakes are typically by accident. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we tend to get a little bit too far to the left or to the right. I know in corporate America, there were some mistakes I made they were just honest mistakes. And I'd like to think I didn't make a lot of them that were too bad. But as an athlete, I played organized baseball. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I had to really realize is that I just wasn't good enough. Right. So I had to make a decision. And in making that decision, I said, well, OK, here goes baseball. So what do I do? And so I selected to 
or elected to go and focus on business. If there was something that you had to change or a mistake that maybe you made or uh, something that you would wish that you could course correct, what would that be? Um, if it's something I could change, I probably would distance myself from some of my childhood friends. Um, because now that I look back on it, um, they were kind of pulling me back to the neighborhood. Because I grew up, I grew up in Orange Mound, uh -huh. and it's like crabs in a barrel, you know. Yeah. Uh, some people want to see you do good, and some of my friends, they were superior athletes, but yeah. they loved the streets. And it was hard for me to distance myself from them. I yes. felt I was obligated yeah. to still be their friend. Yeah. And some of the time I was spending with them, I could have been working on my craft, yeah. uh, getting better. Yeah. And I wasted a lot of time um, then, um, you know, trying to hang with the in crowd, hang with my friends. Sure. And now that I got older, I realized that they were my friends. They'll be my friends once I get through doing handling my business Absolutely. and they would still be my friends if they were my true friends. Um, so you, you have to distance, I, if I could take it back, I would distance my friends and I would work on my craft wow. uh, more. I just That's one of the things I wish I could do yeah. was give it my all uh, before it's over with. Some clarification and just a point to really thank you once again because what you've talked about again is one of those A's of bring your A game and that's those are though that's those associates mm -hmm. because they can make or break you right. the other point of clarification is we'd like to have the viewing population to know that Orange Mound USA is indeed a great community. And uh, Coach yes, Kimball uh, was just really talking about <laughs> the people, you yeah, know, those, yes, sir. Yes, those sir. individuals that are there because you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, there are individuals from time to time that would rather see you get in trouble right. than to do something productive. You know, I can recall uh, a gentleman that really hit superstar and he was going to move away from his friends and they said so are you going to move and he goes yeah i'm mm -hmm. going to move because i know what we did we used to break into people's homes so mm -hmm. if i get wealthy and buy a big place in this community or build mm -hmm. one what do you think is going to happen so sometimes we do have to as we grow we do have to find um find new friends oh, and i know in the business community we say if you're the smartest person in your circle then you really need to find another circle. Mm -hmm. So um, I really applaud you there for at least thinking about that and then being able to share that with oh, yes. the young people that you work with. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with uh, Coach Kenneth Kimball, and he is a basketball coach. He coaches AAU as well as high school basketball, and we're gonna be talking at another time and in another show because we've talked about developing a for senior people, not as senior as me, but uh, younger than, than, than I am around Coach Kimball's age. Uh, once again, he can be reached at 901-333-9099, and he can be reached by email at Kenny Kimball. 10 at gmail.com. I'm Coach Ricks and I can be reached at rix international at msn.com or 901-870-7492. We can both be found on Facebook. We'd like to ask you to go on Facebook, go to Coach Ricks Winners and like us there and go to Kenny Kimball and like him there as well. Now, once again, we're back on track with progress through the process, <laughs> talking with Coach Kimball. Coach Kimball, what do you think are some of the problems or some of the things that you would encourage young athletes to just stop? And we're gonna kind of um, give a short answer here and I want to find out before we leave we've only got like two minutes here to find out what it is that you really love about the sport so what would you just tell them in one or two words what would you tell them to stop doing right away uh, I would I ain't two words but yeah. I would tell them to stop the flashiness yes uh, the athletes today is all about the flair the dunking the crossing over uh, when that's not that's not what basketball is about. It's about the fundamentals. 
speak. You got to you got to have fundamentals to perform those acts. Back to the and, basics. Yes, sir. And yes, just sir. Um, just in a very short sentence, what is it that you love about the game? Um, I love the game because it it brings people together. Um, it teach teaches you work ethic and and teamwork. And those I think can translate over into life in general uh, if they are taught that at a young age. Wow, I think that is as we would say in Dell Carnegie when I was a Dell Carnegie instructor that we want to end on a high note, and I don't think that it gets much higher than that <laughs> on good work ethic and teamwork. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the best of Coach Rick's winners with your host. Coach Ricks, respect, integrity, and excellence, and our special guest that I have just really enjoyed talking with, Coach uh, Kenneth Kenneth Kimball Jr. I was going to give you the junior before the Kimball, <laughs> but uh, Coach Kenneth Wayne Kimball Jr. Uh, this has really been enjoyable. Uh, once again, I appreciate you for all that you do. Yes, sir. Be on the lookout for us because I think we're going to be doing some more things together. Yes, sir. And uh, before we close out, we're going to close out with giving you information once again. Coach Kenneth Jr., 901-333-9099. He can be reached by email at kennykimball10 at gmail.com or on Facebook by Kenny Kimball. I'm your host, Ricky Tucker, better known as Coach Ricks, and I, too, can be reached at Coach Ricks Winners on Facebook. We'd like to thank you once again for joining us and remember to always be your best.